We are all here at the Grand Palm Hotel in Gaborones in Botswana for the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, which is round for the South African Off-Road Championships for cars, motorcycles and quads. There are 180 competitors gathered here for the race run over two days, and one of the main supporters of off-road racing in South Africa is, of course, Toyota. Toyota is the largest seller of uh, 4x4s in the South African market, and this is our way of putting something back into the sport. The first section of the route changed completely since last year. We have tried to make it a lot more spectator friendly than what it was in the past. In the past the competitors could not really get to the route and they could never get to the road crossings. Whereas this year there's quite several places where the supporters will be able to see their vehicles and their, their cars. Friday afternoon is for scrutineering and to put on the official livery and then they all go into impound for the night. Nice to have Hubert Oriel, the organiser and twice a winner of the Perry Dakar Rally, out here for the Toyota 1000. Well, I think you have very good drivers, uh, especially, you know, I, I have the experience of Alfie Cox, you know, I saw him uh, on the race and I think he could be one of the next uh, winner of the Paris Dakar Rally because he has a big experience of off-road racing, he now has a big knowledge of the race, big experience, he's a very fast and tough rider, we saw it with his problem of his arm this year. But it's not the only one, and I'm sure definitely you have uh, maybe 10 drivers who could be in the top 10, you know, uh, of a race. And uh, that's why uh, I'd like to try to take them coming to our races, uh, because uh, the Dakar is uh, somewhere one of the huge, you know, off-road race. And uh, takes place in, in January across all Africa, North Africa. But it's kind of a mythic race, and uh, I think it uh, should be a dream for drivers to do it once. So that's why we try to see, uh, to come here to kind of try to arrange things so they, they can come and race in, Af in North Africa. Everyone gets tucked away for the night, waiting for the early start for the toughest of all off-road races in this country. Just before 7 o'clock on Saturday morning, the cars all lined up and ready to go. Not too popular is the draw for starting positions in each category. And first away for the 1,000 kilometre haul is the Castrol Jimco, Greg Harvey and Boyd Stone, the 98 champions in this class. They come from the Eastern Province. Straight away they're going to a special stage. Lots of people out early this morning to see the excitement of this Toyota 1000. These two have also raced in the States. From a motorsport family is Neil Woolridge, who's with Paul for Mark and the Reptile Gel Pajera, which they raced in the Granada Deco Rally this year. Yeah, it is the big one of the year. It's the one that everyone looks forward to. Uh, it's one that hasn't been that fantastic for us. Uh, I've only won it once before in 1996 in the Nissan. Um, and last year we had an engine problem, so we didn't make it here. So yeah, we're really looking forward to it. It's two days, a uh, thousand kilometers, which is really going to be long and hard. I think the secret of this race is to get to the overnight stop with a car and a good, strong uh, condition and yourself in a good condition and then push hard on the, on the way back on Sunday. It's very dusty, the dust hangs, there's no wind as uh, so early in the morning so it's, it's quite difficult to keep track you know and it, it tends to be very tight in the beginning amongst all of the population here yeah. and uh, yeah that's about once you get out in, in the open it starts becoming easier to, to do the job that I've got to do. One of the favourites this year for an overall win is the father and son combination of France Senior and Junior, the Chepix and the Flat Six Porsche engine race car. Uh, you know, won this event for the last two years in a row and uh, you know to win again would be fantastic a hat trick would be really really welcome although there's a lot of competition out there you know everybody wants to win this race everybody wants to win the race there's 80 competitors here today so there's going to be one hell of a lot of competition and our strategy is basically going to be to take it easy in the beginning it's a long race it's a thousand k's and um, we want to be there at the finish so we're going to take a nice steady pace to keep on the pace but um, not go too mad these two share their driving on a Porsche specialist in Gauteng. Right, the next one is Newton Love and Colin Pote in the Quickfoot Raceco. They've done very well this year, second in the class in Luchtenberg and Barberspan, and fifth overall at Barberspan. And here's action. Cliffy Barker and Malcolm Jubey in the Land Rover. It's a Land Rover 110110, fitted with an M3 BMW engine, known as Mr. Nice Guy. Cliff has had problems early in the season, but is now up and racing with Rob Green Motors. And he's been in Land Rover since 1994, knows a thing or two about them, also has won the roof in one of these. Another mighty machine in South African off-road racing, the Castrol Toyota 4.5 litre Land Cruiser, fitted with Yokohama tyres and driven by a five times winner. Yeah, we have done the 12 keer the desert race. We have done it 10 keer and we have done it 5 keer. Win. The other two places and I think one or two places. So 
En die verleden was hij deze nog een van ons gansten lang bijeenkomsten. En ons denk nog steeds, dat is een van die lekkere bijeenkomsten om te doen op je kalender. De Birken Brothers are next, Andrew and Chris in the Castle Toyota. They won in their class for production vehicles in the first two events this year. They've had a few problems with their transmission, but are meaning to finish and get points. Uh, the desert race is very hard. Um, I think we're going to have a problem today. We worked in the vehicle until 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, we still have a diff problem. Uh, we haven't managed to solve it. Uh, we're going to run in two-wheel drive, and when we need to, we'll put into four-wheel drive. Our objective at this stage is just to finish. Uh, I think, unfortunately, a good position is out the window for us before the start. Second day, which is basically the way home, is, is far, far tougher than the, the way out there. Here's another pair of action men, Shamir Varioa, now Kauteng based, but in a Botswana registered vehicle, with experienced Bix Carolyn doing the navigating in the Chenith. Have a great following of fans. And this is what the court tough course looks like as competitors go out into the back and beyond. It's dusty, it's rough, it's stony, it's an absolute car breaker. They're first going to travel southwest of Cabaron and then head off northwest for the start of the 250 kilometer loop. And in a single seater, the mighty mag, Marius Bahrain, in a car that is always competitive. Tom Smith hasn't been beaten this year in the Pomona Porsche Mighty Mag and could be in for another win. It's just a hell of a long race. All I want to do is try and get to the end. The first 60 k is apparently very hard and rocky, so I just want to get through that and don't get stuck in the sand and just keep it going, you know? Here's that big Castle Toyota hard at work, Rainer and Houghton doing the uh, navigating, and you can just see the importance of the navigator trying to find those markers in the dust. This dust is just hovering over this uh, felt as they wrestle that big power machine. So easy to wrong slot in one of these. And listen to the sound of that racing Porsche engine. Just going along at 8,000 uh, RPM. It's going to be doing that for 1,000 kilometers. And you can see the dust is so thick this early in the morning. And the draw for starting position is certainly not going to go down well with the Chepix. This combination hasn't been beaten this year so far. Totally standard Castro Toyota rallying an off-road legend. Kasi could see with Pete Swanepoel as his navigator. We're positive, positive about it. There's a race of 1,000 kilometers. And there's no strategy. We can uh, approach it, you know, and make a decision if we come to obstacle. Uh, we haven't got, haven't got a good starting position, but never mind. So the dust is the main problem today. And we're going to just keep tracking. At our halfway mark, we decide faster or slower. What's the problem? And Cassie can certainly keep on trucking. From Botswana, Shumi van Fer and Fani Kotsa have been a very successful team in off-road racing. You can always expect lots of action from them. And here we are out in the course. It looks like the scene from the film, The Gods Must Be Crazy. It's Greg Harvey, Boy Stone. They started first. They don't have the dust problem but they've got to act as pathfinders to find the route and it's so easy to get lost in these conditions. Second on the road, here comes Neil Woolridge and Paul Fabach. Woolridge, of course, raced motorcycles, went in the uh, Welsh International on two-wheelers, and the Chepix. You can see that it's so difficult to see in this dust, and that light at the back, of course, is for identification that the other competitors can see you. Newton, Love and Colin Poth underway, but having too many problems with the dust, it seems to settle as the three leaders are tending to get away from the others. Our vehicle stands a sort of treatment over a thousand kilometers beyond me. Cliffy uh, Barker and uh, Martin Jonker going flat out there in the Land uh, Rover. Here's R.P. Reinecke, Robin uh, Houghton. Big dust problem here. Which way do we go here? Have to stop and wait. There's like a mist hanging over the felt there. But they enjoy this as their success has improved. Right down to the riverbeds. Bevan Berta on the Jack's Paint and Hardware single seater attacks the section with ease. It's a rear wheel drive, very light in the front. Just pops his wheel over the bank and on his way. Here are the leaders once again, they don't have, as we say, don't have the dust, dust problem, here's a ooh, the wrong slot here, easy to get caught out here, so easy, no tracks to follow, and the road ahead could go anywhere here, and of course off-road races are won and lost in sections like this. I think we'll try this route, here we go across the felt, this is going to open up for the others, they can follow their track, but this section is sure to cut, uh, catch out a lot of the other competitors. And their lead is being reduced, they started half a minute ahead of the next competitor, the others will be starting to come along now. And as they go here very, very quickly, they're crossing the Gabaron Moli Paloli Road. The suspension, just look at it working away there. It's rear wheel drive and it's just all suspension and shock absorbers. And those drivers and navigators sitting in relative comfort. Right, flying along here. Neil Woolridge, it's now right hand drive. They used to race with air conditioning, electric windows. They've taken those out in the interest of like this. And here they are, the Chepix. Haven't caught up to Woolridge yet, but are going very well. Still that dust, they haven't got a windscreen there. But they have a lot of ventilation going into their helmets. Cliffy Bark and Jebet, still spectacular. We're now southwest of Gaborone, soon to turn north across the Tamaga Road. Here's off again, sixth at the moment. 
Also just holding station this first 250 kilometer section. And Bevan Bertal, always on a charge, absolutely flat out. Here's Cliff Barker now, trying to come out the river bit. Oh, get stuck. Four-wheel drive. Can't do the power of that engine's all at the top. And Bevan Bertal arrives in the Jacks Payton Hardware uh, race car. He wants to get past there very quickly. Cliffy Sporting, he just moves out of the way. Just needs a run at that hill. But uh, that M3 engine is that BMW engine's got all the power at the top, not that slug, sloggy power down the bottom. Two-wheel drive, whoops, nearly pops it over backwards and on his way. Bevan Bertold, a motocrosser, a group end racer as well. And here comes Arpy. He's now moved up a position. He's moved up on the road to fifth position ahead of Cliff Bach and it just goes up there so easy. And this group of drivers have broken away from the rest of the field. This is what it looks like. Here we are with uh, the Pajero going very quickly. It's a sandy section from Gaborone going northwest up to the, uh, the loop at the top of this one, 250 k's away. You can see that's a four-wheel drive. It's battling with the sand. And here you can see the two-wheel drive. The Birkins have had that trouble getting through, trying to find a, a hard patch as they come through there. It's very, very deep sand. A normal 4x4 would just get stuck in here and would hardly be able to make its way forward. They found a soft patch here. They're following a couple of tracks. Castle Toyota's almost in fest as they are the favourites in this E1 class. They lead the championship at the moment back into that thick sand. And here's the second man on the road. It's Woolridge and it's for Mark. And have a look behind. Still in the dust, but he's caught up that gap. Just holding station. Doesn't want to take any chances, Francie Chepik, as they're going to that thick uh, dust of that riverbed. It's very thick. Chepik's holding back. They're covered in dust at the moment. But breathing easily. They've got an air system going into the helmet. See the difference there between four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive as they go along that riverbed. It's such thick sand along there. And that Porsche engine still sounding like tearing calico. We're about 120 kilometers into this race at the moment. There's a vehicle that started first uh, early this morning. Now lying in third position, battling in the sand. Bevan Bertal, he's got his own route across, at the, uh, across the uh, felt at the spectator stage. Arpi Ranica, there he comes. He takes the more conventional route. And you can see the spectator starting to line the route right along here where the uh, track actually crosses the main road. And that big four and a half leader, you can hear it, is battling along in that thick sand. It is so thick, it is so dusty. Cliffy Barker as well. Got to keep that BMW, that M3 engine revving. Sounding good now. He had problems in the early start of the season with gearbox and clutch problems. Probably too much power going to the gearbox. But it's sounding good now. It's really slugging away. Hein Trobler, Charles Volmont in the gearbox services Toyota. They come from Clarkstorp. Hello, which way do we go? Oh, crowds say you're going the wrong way. They can't hear them in there and he's navigating. So I wonder which way do we go now? Which way did those tracks go? Let's go back and have another try. Now you're looking at spectators. They always seem to go to the places where the competitors have trouble. Well, it's somewhere around here. We've got to find our way out of here. There's that 4x4 four four bounces its way across the felt. Right, let's have another go. We'll go up there and we'll see if this is the right track. And in the meantime, here come the Birkins. And that's going to get him into the lead in that class. That's the standard production class. Here comes it. Only two-wheel drive. And that back, those back tires, those Yokohama tires are spinning away. And get them to the top. Is this the way to go? His navigator seems to say yes. Let's go. So, Andrew Birkin's taking the right way. And uh, right on their tails. <laughs> there they are. There's uh, Hein Trobler and Charles Lorman getting the route set for them. Another spectacular vehicle. Left-hand drive. It's Shamir Variawa. 